installment, we chat with Alice Bach, a biblical scholar who attended the 5th Annual Summit of the Christians United for Israel. It was held in Washington, D.C. from July 20th to the 22nd, 2010. Thank you for watching Palestine Studies TV. I'm Will Yeomans. In her article for the Journal of Palestine Studies, Professor Alice Bach cast a critical eye on the group's proceedings, politics, and use of scripture. Professor Bach, welcome to our program. I look forward to speaking with you. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be involved with the Journal of Palestine Studies. What exactly is this group, Christians United for Israel? Uh, they started out with um, mostly members in the South, uh, as you can imagine, uh, because he was from Texas. Uh, and it was also where most of the uh, people were who were part of their group. Now they have about... 430,000 members, and they are uh, in all 50 states. Uh, the conference that I attended, I, I was in a uh, room with about, um, to do our strategizing, with people from uh, five other Midwestern states, and there were 300 of us. It meets as a, a whole group once a year in Washington. During the year, they take several groups to Israel, where they are uh, taken on tours of all of the it's sort of biblical tourism. Uh, they get to see where Abraham's grave is, where Sarah and Abraham are buried. They get to see, they get to go up into the settlements, um, which are no are no longer called settlements by the settlers. They're called communities biblical communities, and these people are part of the biblical community. And who are its members exactly? How would you describe them? They were, I'd say 98% of the people there were white, um, well-dressed, polite, um, kind of like country club people. Um, you know, they loved the banquet, they loved pounding on the tables, they loved having senators like Joe Lieberman come and talk to them. Uh, they loved hearing um, uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, uh, Mr. Netanyahu. It made them feel somehow connected to the real top people. It makes them feel chosen. Why is it that we hear less about Kufi than APEC when their membership numbers are similar? Um, I think, first of all, APAC has been around longer. The mainstream media uh, is much more connected to people at APAC. Let me just give you an example. Ethan Bronner, who is the New York Times Jerusalem bureau chief, um, obviously lives um, in uh, Israel, and his son is currently uh, fighting in the IDF. So that clearly gives him a certain uh, point of view, shall we say. Uh, Wolf Blitzer, um, you may have heard of him. He has a program on CNN. Wolf Blitzer used to work for APEC, um, and he was the editor of one of their newsletters, the Middle, the Mid-Eastern uh, Report. And there's an old saying with the people at APEC that um, the APEC dream would be the topic is the Middle East. The interviewer is Wolf Blitzer. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what it's like on local TV um, in Texas and how much how, uh, media savvy they have there, um, but APAC um, is much more involved uh, congressperson to congressperson, and, and it, it's a different kind of thing. I can't find out too much about what Israel, uh, how uh, the money, for, uh, even though it's a 5013C, it's hard to determine how they use, uh, Kufi uses their money. Um, however, they did give $6 million uh, two years ago to the settlement of Ariel. And Ariel used it to build a, a, a lovely um, theater uh, or you know, 
uh, and it's called the John C. Hagee Theater. Can you discuss Kufi's theology? Specifically, I'm thinking about the move away from the New Testament um, to the shared scriptures. It's curious that most of the Jews who benefit from the largesse of Kufi have never read the book of Revelation. They don't read the New Testament. And as several of them have told me, um, why should they? It's not real. Um, Jesus is not the Messiah. Um, why are you going to read all of this material about Jesus? They believe that the Messiah has not yet come. So when the Messiah comes, they'll be ready. But until that time, um, they're delighted to have the money. They're delighted to have the loyalty. Uh, um, and they're delighted to have Christian spokespeople um, all around the country. But it's very difficult for them to imagine um, that uh, the way the book of Revelation says, those who have not converted to Christianity um, will be lying face down in a river of blood. Um, you know, um, the uh, Orthodox, the Haredi rabbis who pretty well run the settlements, the, the religious settlements, which are the settlements that these people are connected to, um, they decided, hey, uh, these people are going to try to convert us. I'm not sure we really want to be too involved with them. Maybe we should step back. So very subtly in his own mind, uh, to me it was like a sledgehammer, um, John Hagee began to concentrate on the book of Genesis and on the Hebrew texts in which God promises the land to the Jews and promises that the Jews will be the chosen people forever. And one of the great statements that is um, reiterated over and over again at Kufi is Israel is the only nation founded by God. All other nations are founded by humans. Um, so that does give, you know, Israel a leg up. How is Kufi received in Israel? Um, the theology that is taught by the Orthodox um, Jews, uh, the members of what they call the communities, what we call the settlements, um, is the time, ha uh, the first thing that they say all the time is that the time has come for Christians to bless God's nation of Israel. And Christians honor the fact that the Bible was given to Jews. And they understand the Jewish people's claim to the land of Israel. Because in the book of Genesis, God says, I will give you this land. I will give it to your descendants and your descendants' descendants. Because you are the chosen people. Um. So now, many people, uh, unfortunately, Christians did not learn this in their churches. So now they are learning it from Jews and um, from their evangelical pastors. Um, and, and that seems to, and then your job as a Kufi member is to explain it at, to your friends. So you are evangelizing with your friends to a kind of understanding of Judaism as the central faith of the Bible. Um, there is one lovely thing where one of the Jewish pioneers, um, she's a wonderful woman, um, she seems like a wonderful woman, she was a Kufi, she has um, very, very uh, white hair now, and um, she's called a pioneer, a Jewish pioneer. Um, she was a Kyriot Arba, um, which is one of the uh, very, in my way of looking at it, fearsome settlements in Hebron. Um, it is the uh, uh, settlement that stones people in Hebron and children going to school quite regularly. And she says to a younger pioneer who was an American Jew who came um, to help form Kiryat Arba, and she says, Hannah, look around you. We are not washing dishes. We are making history. 
and then the whole audience just burst into applause. Um, the goal is for each pet, if one pastor in every town can pick up the mantle and carry on with it, and if each Kufi member can teach this idea to ten other people in their church or in their what in their workplace, then we will become a strong Christian community. We can adopt an Israel pioneer community out of pure love. We have no hidden agenda. And when that happens, we can shout hallelujah because we have done the work that God wanted us to do when he gave the land to his chosen people. All we're doing is following God's will. Um, we also follow God's will, I might add, with a great deal of money. Many of the people that I met, I really quite liked. You know, Max Blumenthal talked about the 2007 Kufi Conference, and he described it as politically extreme, outrageous, and bizarre. I mean, would you use those kind of terms to talk about the 2010 conference? I respect um, Max Blumenthal as a journalist very much, and I think he, you know, does very interesting work. I think it's a mistake um, to discount these people, to just say, you know, they're outrageous, they're foolish, they're, they're you know, they're uneducated, they, they don't have an intellectual clue as to what they're really doing. Uh, that's foolish. Uh, to me, we have to take them seriously because they are serious and they are having an effect on people in this country, people who vote. And so I think we need to um, very much listen to what they're saying. Uh, I mean, whether you go along with it or not is another matter, but you have to uh, pay attention. Thank you for joining us, Professor Bach. We enjoyed having you on Palestine Studies TV. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you.